Not long after E3 2002 wraps up with a phenomenal showing for Doom, a leaked version of id's new project appears on the internet. We would get mail from people saying, I played the demo and it had all these problems. Whatever, it's not a demo, it was a stolen leaked executable. The notorious sort of Doom 3 alpha wasn't really even an alpha at all. It was actually a build of the game that had been built up for E3 that I'm not exactly sure how it got out. People got a hold of that and of course, you know, it began to distribute over the internet. We'd obviously prefer that something like that never happen, but it doesn't really hurt us that much. Uh, it's a distraction when we have to worry about running damage control and spinning some of the issues in there. Today, we can look back on it, and uh, as bad as it seemed at the time is, is that we've certainly been able to, able to overcome. But I don't think that there's going to be anybody that got a hold of that for some reason that won't buy the game because they saw that. You know, it's just, it's obviously too far away. Too much of it has changed since then. It forges ahead, making advances in a new area. Audio in our games has always been, uh, you know, clearly second fiddle to rendering. But as computers have gotten faster and faster, that couple percent that we devote to audio has gotten more and more capable. One thing that we've done in Doom 3 that's, that's very cool is we have a true six-channel uh, surround sound. And that gives us the ability to have sound and audio cues that happen around the player. So, like, for instance, if, if a demon is sneaking up behind you, you can hear them. You're walking through a dark corridor and you hear whispers that circle you. It really kind of gets the player into the game because they're like in a, a wave of sound. And Chris Brenna, the former drummer for Nine Inch Nails, is brought in to lend his talent to the music in Doom 3. In Doom 3, the music is a little bit different than what we've done in previous titles. Usually, uh, what we had is like a soundtrack that loop throughout the entire level or area that you're in. But in Doom 3, what we try to do is kind of make the world around you almost musical in its ambient sense. It's all kind of very, very different, very fluid, uh, you know, very, uh, uh, you know, changing and, and unique. Its new game is also being developed for the Xbox. The original core rendering decisions for Doom were influenced very specifically by the capabilities of the Xbox. We knew at the time what the Xbox was going to be like coming out, and the, the rendering of what we do with geometry and surfaces and textures and all that was crafted around something that was going to be efficient on the Xbox. One of the great things about the Xbox is the technology in the Xbox uh, is very similar to you know the technology that John looked at when he architected the, the engine. So. All the features that you see in the PC version will be in the Xbox version. The dynamic lights, the physics, the bump mapping. Now, of course, there will be things that are different, but I believe that people that don't have a PC that have an Xbox will still be able to enjoy what the PC people will be, will be raving about. Doom 3 is shown again at E3 in 2003 and 2004. Each time it appears, attendees are awed. Work on the game begins to wrap up. I sure it's going to be a huge release when everything gets out here, but everyone everyone should be really looking forward to getting the game out on the shelves because uh, the response should be just really phenomenal. Every gamer on the planet right now wants to get their hands on Doom 3. What I've been most proud of in Doom is the way that the technology's all kind of come together and really provided a seamless experience, whether you're playing the game, searching fighting the monsters or interacting with the GUIs, it's all come together to be a very nice kind of seamless package for the player. The thing that makes me the happiest is when people come to it, they play the game and they say, you know what, that was great. It was better than I thought it was going to be. And before Doom 3 is even out the door, the team at id is already looking to the future. We have decided we're not going to go back and do a Doom 4 or another Quake game, which is, you know, Quake 4 is already in development at Raven, and uh, Return to Castle Wolfenstein, basically, the, the sequel to that is, is a project that's, that's already in the works in another studio as well. Um, so our, our job will be making something new, and we've decided we're going to do a new, a new IP, a new brand for id. After any project, I've usually got a pretty big list of technologies to explore. You know, there's other just wild research ideas that I'm going to be pursuing on there. The next project is actually already in the works. You know, we have uh, some rough ideas. You know, we started on some, some very simple concept art. Um, we are a small team. You know, we make games the same business. And that's what we need to do. So we will start on the next title relatively quickly. 
I think 20 years from now, we're going to look back at it as being a fundamental source for all that is great about interactive entertainment. And that there's going to be no way that there's not an it chapter when they get around to writing the history of interactive entertainment.